Welcome back. In this video, we start explaining classifiers based on the covariance matrix. The first, the first of them is the linear discriminant analysis. Now, the linear discriminant analysis, usually uh, abbreviated as LDA, is used for dimensionality reduction. Dimensionality reduction means uh, if we have data with too many variables or predictors, then sometimes it's a good practice to try and reduce them, reduce the number of variables or predictors to that uh, describe the data, while preserving as much of the uh, class discrimination in, uh, information as possible. Uh, in data mining, having too many features does not always mean having good um, uh, 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 models. You can just search, for example, the concept which is known as the curse of dimensionality to understand what that means. Maybe we can have a video on this in the future. Now, the first of the models or the classifiers we're going to explain, which are based on um, covariance metrics, as we said, is the LDA. LDA, or linear discriminant analysis, is a classification method originally developed in 19, I'm sorry, developed in 1936 by R.I. Fisher. It's a simple, mathematically robust method. It often produces models whose accuracy is as good as more complex methods. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to try and refresh your matrix algebra. Now, LTA is based upon the concept of searching for a linear combination of variables. Notice it's a linear combination, which means if we have two variables or two predictors or two features, then it's a straight line. If it's a three, it's a plane. If, if more than three variables, then it's a hyperplane. Now, the linear combination of these variables needs to best separate two classes. So we, we are dealing with a binary classification problem now. We only have two classes or targets. We want to find a linear combination of the variables that best separates those two classes. What that means is, is we have data and we only have two classes. For example, if you have a data set, some classes are yes, some classes are no, then that's where uh, LDA can be used and data usually is numerical by the way if your data is categorical then hopefully you still remember how to convert it back into numerical if not then please go and watch my data uh, data exploration and analysis tutorial in there I explain how to do this and how to do the opposite ie convert from numerical to uh, categorical now to capture the notion of separability Fisher defined the following scoring function Z equals beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 da -da 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 -da, until beta d x d. Now, these x's now are our variables. If our data, for example, is two-dimensional, just like the one we used for, uh, for example, the example we used for decision trees when we said, um, when we said, um, I don't know whether it was in decision trees or something else, but we said, we can, for example, measure the heights and weights of people. So these are two variables. Our data is two-dimensional. This height and weight, this, these are the x's. So the height and weight are the x's. This can be height, weight, something else, something else. And these betas now are coefficients that we need to find. Notice now, these betas now can be represented as a, uh, an, an, an array or a vector. And these x's now can be represented as a matrix. So what we do is we split our data into two subsets, each one of them for one class. So for example, one subset for the yes, one for one subset for the no class. And then what we do is with that data, um, we find mu1 and mu2. Mu1 is the mean for the first uh, subset. Mu2 is the mean for the uh, uh, second subset. And the beta now is our uh, vector of our coefficients and C here is the covariance matrix so this is our scoring function and it can be represented as uh, you know the score of beta equals Z1 bar minus Z2 bar Z1 is this, Z2 bar is this over the variance of Z with groups within groups I'll explain what this means in a second now giving that score function the problem now becomes a problem of estimating the linear coefficients, i.e., finding these betas. Now, the this these betas. By the way, this bt here is the transpose of beta. So beta, as we said, is a vector, 
and we do the transpose. I hope you know what a transpose of a matrix or a vector is. You just turn the rows into columns and the columns into rows. Now beta equals c minus 1 mu 1 minus mu 2 mu 1 and mu 2 are the two uh, 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 mean vectors for the two subsets as we mentioned before C now is a covariance matrix or known as pooled covariance matrix C minus 1 is the inverse of that matrix now I, again I hope you know how to or at least you know what an inverse of a matrix is now to find C which is the pooled covariance matrix uh, we use this equation 1 over n plus 1 I'm sorry, 1 over n1 plus n2. n1 is the number of instances in the first subset for the yes class. n2 is the number of instances or observations in the second class, class second subset, which is for the uh, uh, no class. Times n1 c1. c1 is the covariance matrix for the first subset. c2 is the covariance matrix for the second subset. And here, you, as you can see, 1 over n1 plus n2 times n1 c1 plus n2 c2 that's how we find c the pooled covariant method we plug that in there and we find our coefficients our coefficients we plug them in this into this equation here of betas and their corresponding variables and we get the equation for our uh, uh, the equation for the linear combination if it's only two variables then it's a straight line as we mentioned before if we have three then it's a plane if we have four it's a hyperplane yes i hope that makes sense now, after finding the parameters and uh, the coefficients and finding that equation, now we want to assess the effectiveness of discrimination. Now, how good is our uh, uh, LDA? How how good the separation is? And one way to do that is to find the Mahalanobis distance between the two groups, between the first group, which is the first subset for the S class, and the second subset for the No class. Now, to find that, uh, we do delta square equals beta t, beta transpose, so this is the transpose of the um, uh, the coefficient vector, or the vector of coefficients, times mu1 minus mu2. We mentioned that mu1 is the mean for the first subset, mu2 is the mean for the second subset, i.e. for the uh, uh, no class. I hope that makes sense. Uh, usually people use a, va a value of 3 for the Mahalanobis distance, so Mahalanobis is the square root of delta square. Delta equals Mahalanobis distance between the two groups, i.e. between the first group and the second group, as we mentioned. And 3 uh, greater or less than 3, that's usually used as a way to assess the effectiveness of discrimination. Now, let's assume that we have a new point, a uh, d-dimensional point, according to our data, and we want to check whether it belongs to the first class or the second class. Well, what we do is, we plug it here into this equation, and if this value is greater than the log of probability of class 1 over probability of class 2, then we assign it to the first class, C1, uh, which is maybe, as I gave an example, yes. If it's less than that, less or equal, then uh, we assign it to the class, second class, maybe no, as I said in my example. Now, probability of class 1 and class 2 can be found, as we mentioned before, using counts. So, for example, if I have a data with... 100 instances, 40 of them belong to first class, 60 of them belongs to the second class, then the probability of the class 1, C1, is 40 over 100, which is 0.4. The probability of the second class is 60 over 100, which is 0.6. So we can find that quite easily. And we have now our coefficients vector, beta transform, or transpose, I'm sorry, the transpose of that vector, times x, which is a vector now of our data, of our variables, as we mentioned in the beginning, just just a, a vector of values. X minus uh, mu1 plus mu2 over 2, and this is the mean vector. Mu1 is the mean for the first subset, mu2 is the mean for the second subset. You just plug, pl plug these values in and find whether the new point belongs to class 1 or class 2. Enough talking. In the next video, we'll take an example for things to make more sense. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.